Algebra 2, Concept 6b. We're going to continue looking at transformations of quadratic functions, and we're going to focus on reflections in the x-axis, vertical stretches, and vertical compresses. So let's start by getting down some vocabulary and definitions. So a reflection in the x-axis is a flip of a graph over the x-axis or a horizontal line of reflection. A vertical stretch is a stretch of the shape of the graph towards the y-axis. The graph shape will become more narrow. A vertical compress is just that, a compress, or sometimes we call it a shrink, and it's a shrinking away from the y-axis. The graph shape will widen, it widens, or it appears to flatten. So now let's graph some of these transformed functions. So first let's start with the parent function, which you know is just y equals x squared. So let's write that in our table. We know our vertex is 0, 0, and we're going to use those values that we have used before. 2 in the negative direction and 2 in the positive direction. So plot those and you have your parent function. Now our transformed function is y equals 2x squared. So notice there is a multiplier now out front. That is an a value. Our h and our k values are still 0 because there's no, nothing being added or subtracted to x or at the end of the function. And then let's put in values 2 in the negative direction and 2 in the positive. And then we do the math. So first we have to do exponents because of order of operations. So we square negative 2, which is positive 4, and multiply it by 2 and get 8. Then do the same with negative 1. If you square it, you'll get 1 times 2 is 2, and so on. And then do the same with the values 1 and 2. Then when you graph them, notice the red graph compared to the blue. It has been stretched upward. It is going towards the y-axis. So that is what we call <clears throat> a vertical stretch. And we can say by a factor of 2, a vertical stretch by 2, and we just use the multiplier. We're going to identify the vertex, which is, in this case, a minimum, and it is at 0, 0. So now let's go to the next example. We're going to start with the parent function. I'm not even going to show the table of values this time, y equals x squared. So we just know that our um, vertex is at 0, 0, and then we have points at negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, and so on. Now our transformed function is a little different. We have negative 1 half, our, that's our a value, and that's the multiplier. Two things are going to be happening with this function. The negative is going to reflect it, and the 1 half is going to compress it. We go ahead and put in our normal values, though, for x, and then we just do the math. So putting in negative 2, when we square negative 2, we get positive 4. Half of positive 4 is 2, and then we have to multiply it by that negative. Notice all your values for y, except for the 0, are going to be negative. Thus, we're going to have a flip across the x-axis. So now, just carefully plot these points. Notice how the graph, the curve is wider than the blue one, the red one is, um, and the one that opens up. Also notice that it is reflected, so we have two transformations we need to name. We have a vertical compress, or a shrink, <clears throat> by a factor of a half. We don't use the negative when we describe that. We also know that because our a value is going to be less than 1. Our vertex is at 0, 0. And we have an x-axis reflection. So now let's make some generalizations and fill in these blanks. So for a vertical stretch, when the absolute value of that constant a, that's why I put it in quotes, is greater than 1, we have a stretch. The graph narrows, it stretches towards the y-axis. For a vertical compress, that happens when our a value, that constant in the equation, is less than 1. It's called a vertical compress, and the graph widens or flattens. It is compressed away from the y-axis. A x-axis reflection occurs if the output is multiplied by a and the value of a is opposite or negative of the original function.
then that is what we call an x-axis reflection. Now you have some independent practice. These are a little different because besides the first one, um, the other problems are new. We didn't cover these in the notes, but I would like for you to attempt them. So the first one is just, as you can see on the screen, going to ask you to graph this value. Um, <clears throat> the next ones are going to ask you to identify transformations. So pause the video and graph this graph using the technique that we have done, and then come back to check um, your work. Okay, I'm going to show my work as I talk. So, <clears throat> notice I've identified my A value and the fact that the value of it is greater than 1, so I know I'm going to have a vertical stretch. I fill in values in my table like I have before, doing the math. I also can see by the negative value of A that my graph is going to reflect across the x-axis. It's going to open downward. My transformations then are 2, a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and an x-axis reflection. Now look at number 2. This is where you're describing the transformation um, of these equations from the parent functions. So hopefully what you did is you looked at the a, h, and the k value. So in number two, <clears throat> and I've written this so you can just remember where they're located. Number two, our a value is negative four, our h is negative one, and our k is negative five. So those tell us so much. The a value tells us two things that we have a vertical stretch because the value of negative four is four, which is greater than one, and that we have a reflection because of that negative. The h value, as we see it in the equation, tells us that's going to shift to the left because that h value is added. And then the negative five tells us that the graph is going to shift down. Now let's do the same for number two, or hopefully you've done this already. If not, just do it with me now. So we have an a and an h value other than um, 1 and 0. So positive 1 half and 1. So we know that that 1 half is going to be a vertical compress by a factor of a half. The graph is going to widen from the parent and then our graph is going to shift 1. Now let's identify the vertex. And remember this is the easy part. It's just the h and the k values. So in part a we have the vertex at negative 1, negative 5, because our h is opposite from what we see in the equation. And in b, it is positive 1, 0. And finally, check your work on number 3. So here you needed to write a function um, from the parent to show the transformation that has been described. So in a, we need a reflection over the x-axis, and we need to move that down 3. So the reflection, we're going to have to adjust the a value. So that's what I did first. I just simply put a negative, or it's technically a negative 1, and that will reflect the graph. And now, down 3, I introduce a k value, so just minus 3. On b, I need a vertical stretch by 2 and a reflection over the x-axis. So I introduce an a value for my stretch to move right 5, Oh, sorry, then I need a reflection, so I introduce a negative. Now I need to move to the right, so I open up a parenthesis so that I can put a so minus 5 right in by the x, close the parentheses, and then put my squared. And then finally, up 2, so I'm going to introduce the k value. So the final equation is negative 2 times x minus 5 squared plus 2. All right, now you are ready to complete... practice, I believe, over this concept. Maybe do a teacher talk if it's in your notes.